Welcome back to the Pool Pro Podcast, episode number 20. Is your business organized, especially on the financial side? By taking control of your finances, you can reduce anxiety and stress. We have a simple tool that's really inexpensive. Take a listen. Welcome back to the Pool Pro Podcast. This is Michelle Cavanaugh with my co-host. Dave Rockwell. Hey, Dave. We doing? have a wonderful guest today that I've known for quite some time, and this is the kind of person you need on the podcast to show what you may not even know you need, but you do need this type of person in your life. Believe me, I would be lost without this person, and I know Dave's been working with him as well. We want to welcome Joe DTR from New York, New York. Yes. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Joe. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Yes, fantastic. I'm and everything seems like it's calmed down in New York a little bit after what happened earlier in the year, and I think it's blowing up in other places now. But New York seems to be doing okay. Yeah, yeah, we're out. We're out and about. I actually ate out at a restaurant last night. I'm literally out on the sidewalk. Nice. So, <laughs> but, Some sense of normalcy back in your life, right, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, thanks so much for coming on. And Joe is an accountant. He's actually my accountant. And um, he has uh, the account of several other service guys. He's been doing webinars um, as part of my CPSA campaign that I've done separately. And, and he's been around um, talking about his services to pool guys. And so we want to make sure as part of this podcast, we want to bring tools to you that can help you with your business to run it more efficient, efficiently or effectively to be able to take time out of your admin side of your business, to be able to focus on what you do best, which is being out in the field and serving your customers in the backyard or, or through apartment complexes and so forth. So the goal of this is really to bring Joe in to talk about what, what can help you in your business. And Joe, tell a little bit about what you do um, before we get started. What do I do? That's a good question. Yeah, yeah how, do you, how do you, what's your elevator speech? <laughs> I am a serial entrepreneur that I always classify my, myself as an entrepreneur first. And I am a CPA over 30 years. I've worked with thousands of business owners and I do business coaching. And Very nice. they, yeah, so basically, you know, I just try to help small business owners organize their business. So let me uh, tell you what I see. I'm, I'm part of a number of, uh, social media forums with, with pool professionals. Um, some guys new in the business, other guys long time. And, and there's basically a couple different kinds of guys out there. There's um, guys who are really killing it. We, inter we interviewed uh, Steve Claro out from uh, Palm Springs area and, and he's killing it. He's got a big company, a, you know, hundreds of pools and trucks. Jerry Wallace up in Sacramento is doing the same yep. thing. We also have a lot of single pole uh, solo guys and they're looking to get to that next step in their business. And, and I see all the time their quality of life is terrible. It's, they're working six and seven days a week um, for customers that don't appreciate what they do. They don't, they don't have any respect for them as professionals and um, they, they really don't have a sustainable lifestyle on what they're doing. So, uh, and I think after kind of just starting to work with you, what I'm seeing is that it, it comes down to knowing who, who out of your customer base is really worth spending your time on and who maybe you'd be better off uh, letting somebody else take care of them. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'll tell you, and Dave, you've been following me on, on Facebook Lives, and I do this a lot in my PowerPoint, and I point out that life is tough. That's it, you read a book called The Road Less Traveled, and, and I read the first paragraph, and he said, life is tough, once you can accept it, you can enjoy life. So I'm not gonna make life easy. <laughs> for people. It's just, it's just tough. And then we start a business and we make it even tougher. Yeah. So my mission, what I found, because I've been whittling it down and making how, you know, laser focused can I get is to simply help people organize their business. Yeah. That's what I do. You know, most people think that uh, an accountant is that I'm going to prepare taxes and do bookkeeping. 
bookkeeping. Yes, that's part of my function, but really I'm looking at the, the micro business because I like how you described it, Dave. You have these guys that went beyond that. They got big. They've already conquered that, that part of it. So I focus on the other people that you were talking about, the people with the quality of life. You know, why you, know, you go into business to improve your quality of life. Yep. And yep. then you work in seven days a week and you don't see your family. Well, for, for me, I can't solve all of those problems, but what I can do is on the bookkeeping side, the side that people don't even want to be bothered with, is just take that over, organize it, and then, you know, have an overview of what's actually going on in the business. Now, you have a, you have a tool that, that I've just started to use. It's a very, very simple program for, for organizing your books. Um, maybe you could tell us a little, tell our listeners a little bit about that and how, how, that, how that works. Yeah, I'd love to. So if, if you're around, you know, as long as I have been, you know, I grew up with QuickBooks. And everybody knows QuickBooks. And I saw that start out as, as what Wave Apps is now. A very simple way to automate your business, to computerize. You know, back then it was like, oh, my God, we can computerize everything. And right. it worked. And then I saw QuickBooks slowly, you know, like I believe that they just got greedy. They wanted to do everything for everyone and it became a monstrosity. So QuickBooks didn't help people. It, it hurt a lot of businesses because it overcomplicated it. So I, you know, Wave Apps, I've been following them for, for years now. And something must have happened probably two years ago that must have changed the board because now this program, it's 10 times better than QuickBooks was when it first started. It automates everything and it just, it gives me the tool to help, you know, people in your industry. Very easy. Dave, you know how long did it take you to set up? Um. It was literally a matter of minutes. Yep. And I didn't even, you know, I was like, I was saying, oh, shoot, I hope I didn't ask the wrong question. What if it took him two hours? <laughs> but, you know, and I demonstrate this on Facebook. I do it all. I said, I'm going to set up another. Now, you try to set that up on QuickBooks. Right. It's not happening in a couple yeah. of years. In, the no. point, in, in using QuickBooks, I, I keep running into these. It, I don't think the way the person who designed that program thinks, and it just, I just want to want to kind of do what I want to do. And it's, it, there's so many things it doesn't let you do. And if you make one mistake, it's so hard to fix. And, and uh, you end up spending hours doing just simple tasks. The, the problem is that the people that designed QuickBooks were not bookkeepers or accountants. Yep. They were tech guys. Yes, and that's the were, problem. They were geniuses at marketing. Because the fact is that there were a lot of programs out there, Peachtree, and, and I forget that a lot of other programs that were better than QuickBooks. So think about that. I'm like, how did they, they just like, and it was marketing. That's what yeah. it was. It wasn't that they were better. It was just marketing. Yeah. They just got big. They got huge. So Joe, when, you, when you're not organizing your business, <clears throat> And we'll talk a little bit about my experience with Wave because I think it's so simple as well. When you're not organizing your business as far as your financials are concerned, how does it impact you? Does it impact you in that you're not taking full advantage of your expenses and things to be able to, you know, use that in your taxes? What is it that is really causing for you financially? So there's a ripple effect. You know, and it permeates your whole business. And, and I actually do a, a Facebook Live on this. On, and, and I said it like tongue in cheek, but I believe it that your whole, all of your success depends on your chart of accounts. <laughs> because it's a structure, it's the organization, it's your financial organization. 
And if that's not organized, I'm sorry, but nothing else. You might be successful, but you'll never be as successful as you can be. Yeah. And things like what Dave was talking about, identifying who are my good clients. Well, where do you get that information from? Oh, because, you know, you saw the guy once in a while and you, no, you want to look at the numbers. Has this, is this guy paying? Uh, is he a pain in the neck? Do I have to make five service calls every month? You know, and it just, so, be, and that's why I, I, but I teach, Michelle, and you know this, I try to teach my clients, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it, so we get this result, and then, you know, it's very easy, you know, it's easy for me, I'm going to go in there, look at your balance sheet, your profit and loss statement, and say, what's going on? <laughs> you have yeah. less money than what you started out with, what's the reason? For you? you know, I'm looking at the results. Yeah. And that starts a process. And this is why, you know, you don't, and I, I, I don't want to get off the topic. Yeah. But most people have a tax preparer. A tax preparer is somebody that they go to once a year, they bring them their stuff, and they start praying. Please give me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't give me any bad news. What people need are, are an accountant. I don't care. You know, and this is the tough part. Dave, when you're describing these guys going into business, you know, I feel that. I, you know, I was one of those guys. I've been dealing with them my whole career. And you don't want to see people uh, struggle and suffer. But the fact is that you're, you're living from week to week a lot of times. And some, a lot of times you're borrowing money, you're in debt. You're not going to go and hire an accountant for $300 a month. Right. I'm looking at this. I'm like, you know, this is what is the reality. And, and I could understand that. I don't think I would, you know, and part, part of the reason why I became a CPA was because I didn't want to have to go to somebody, believe it or not. I said, I want to learn about business. Right. And, and, I, and having an organized set of books is going to affect how much you pay to have your taxes done every year because I've, I've done it where I've taken a couple of file boxes full of unorganized receipts and handed them over to a tax preparer. And uh, it's, it's not cheap to have them do stuff I should have been doing myself all year. No, and then, you know, another factor of this, because it, it all, you know, when I am a solopreneur, I focus on working with solopreneurs, people that are in business, but we don't have, you know, a hundred clients with trucks and everything. We just basically work from home and our business directly affects our life and vice versa. So how did that feel, Dave, when you're going there? Was that like a happy moment or were you filled with anxiety? Yep. Guilt, guilt mostly. And yeah. that doesn't help you. And so that's why I said, oh, my God, this program is perfect because I can be doing a, a service by relieving all of this tension and anxiety in the world. Yeah. It, might, it might sound corny, but I believe that. And you it's know, not... just in general, uh, there's so much emotion tied to money. Yeah. Um, I, I heard a, a story of, of marriage therapists that uh, deal with couples. They can get somebody talking about their sex life in a matter of a couple of visits, but it, it can be months before they'll open up about their feelings about money. Yeah. So. Um, and it's it, the leading cause of divorce, right? Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's just, it is. It's one of the leading causes of stress. And, and one yeah. of the leading causes of stress is, is not knowing where where you stand where you are not not understanding your business from a from a worldview perspective and i think too with the way that for me it's so i don't know if you've done this yet dave but for me i can go in and it actually connects to your business bank account right. like it downloads all of the transactions into the wave app that you have set up now then joe has access to see those transactions but he doesn't have access to my bank account so he can't take money out of my account which is, is a is a good thing but I can go in there and code easily. I just pick from a drop-down menu and I can code those transactions 
to whatever category I'm setting up. And then you can actually look at your numbers and go, did I spend that much money on marketing? Did I spend that much money on this or whatever? And you mm -hmm. can actually look at it because just like budgeting for your personal life, if you don't know how much money you're spending on something, it makes it real hard for you to decide, you know, if you need to make some different decisions in your life, if you need to start, you know, spend less money here and more money here to, to bring business in or whatever the case is, it's just so simple. So I think you have to take the shame out of your game. And I just feel like for those people that, that are embarrassed to, to go to somebody like Joe and, and reveal your books for the first time because you're embarrassed about it, you need to get over that because Joe's not going to judge you. He's going to help you, you know, yeah. or help you get this set up, this app set up type so you can, you can actually start understanding your, your finances. But take the shame out of it because, you know, just like your credit report or your credit score, everybody's really ashamed if they don't have the credit score that somebody else does somebody else has but this is the way you get control of this instead of just just you have to get over that shame part absolutely michelle you know i just had a, a long conversation with a mutual friend of ours and she pointed out she said we're afraid of you yeah we and it's not you know she's afraid of people in general and and this is the fear and it's a self-imposed uh, suffering, I call it. And, you know, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. <laughs> you people, she's like, we all think, and she means, you know, entrepreneurs, people, that we're just so bad at this. We don't want to show you. Yeah. We don't want to, and, and I laughed. I said, do you know how many sets of books I've seen? <laughs> and then... When I when a new client, I said, "Are you? There's nothing wrong here. What were you afraid of?" So people are afraid of the boogeyman. <laughs> yes, they are. You know, and you got to walk through that fear, and that's part of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, and and that's part of being successful. Those guys that got to a hundred trucks, or however those bigger, they walk through that. Yeah, you know, and that's that's the message I'm trying to. Uh, Put out there. Let's. I. I. I'm gonna hire you to do a, a, a paid advertisement for me, <laughs> Right. No. And so those days, sure. like Dave was mentioning, where you have all your receipts in a box and you got to carry them around with you or file them. Those days are gone because all of your transactions are now being loaded into this app where you can go in and code them. You know, the day I think uh, people still believe old school in, in Joe that you have to have all your receipts and a copy of them in case you get audited and all this stuff. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I'm so glad you, because let me tell you something, I, Wave, it's almost like I can't keep up with all the stuff they're adding. And I go in there the other day and there's a, a button that says receipts. I, I click on it, Michelle, I uploaded a couple of uh, dot receipts that I had in three minutes. The name was up there, the amount and the date with the receipt, that, that's it, paperless, seamless, and then you could hook up what category it goes to yeah. and what account. So, you know, I noticed easier. that yesterday too, I, I saw that feature. So you just you just put them in a scanner and, and upload them to the- Or take a, can you take a photo on I, your phone I, and just was, upload it? I was just thinking about that. I said, you know what? It worked with the PDFs. So I'm going to try it with a JPEG and a PNG file. Yeah, you should be able to just take an image with your phone and then and upload that image yeah. right to it. So now this isn't a system that's going to work for, you know, people have a lot of documents. And, you know, this oh, yeah. is for, you know. This is for small yeah. business, small. Right. If you got 20, you know, even 30 documents a month, that's. Otherwise, I, I have another system where I do a whole Google Docs uh, system where, you, you know, it's just a file system that I show people how to organize stuff. Yeah. But unfortunately, you do need those receipts and you need them all in one place. So if you think you're saving your receipts when, when somebody emails them to you, you they're, they're like in that bag. They're not organized, right? <laughs> you know, they're all over the place, and and that's not a good way to run a business. I don't even worry about if I get audited. I'm, I'm just, it's just bad business practice if you're not, because what if you become successful? What if you become the guy with a hundred trucks? 
you need some kind of system and you need to be in the habits, you know, and that's another thing that I try to teach people. And I'm not, you know, a habits culture, but I just know that you got to instill the right routines in your business. Yes. And the other thing I don't think people are aware of too, Joe, if you're ever going to consider selling your business, which a lot of pool guys do, they're in the business for a long period of time, then they sell their route or sell a particular part of their route. And your, you know, your balance sheet, when people look at your balance sheet, it, tell, it, talk, it tells about your business. And you, if you have a balance sheet that looks, you know, looks good or, you know, what, what story are you trying to tell? And the story comes out of your balance sheet. And if it doesn't look good, you know, you may not have the buyers you want for your business or your route or the, the quality of buyers that you want. Did you watch like some of the training videos I've done? No, but I, ha- I heard, I listened to a, um, <laughs> a session on this. <laughs> Working my way through them. Oh my god! So you could teach my course. Yeah. So if you're set, if I'm buying a business, I want to say, what am I buying? And if a guy yeah. presents a garbage bag full of receipts, <laughs> I'm not. You know, you're I want to see somebody that's organized, has the data, and yes, what you were using my exact terms. That's why I'm asking. I said you're. Your financials tell the story of your business. You know, you give me three minutes, somebody's tax return and his his general ledger, and I'll tell you what's going on with his business. Yeah. Okay. If it's not organized like that, I'll say, well, there's a lot, there's a, a lot of room for improvement here. Yeah. So, and I love the fact, you know, you should go into your business thinking someday I want to sell this. Yes. Someday. Absolutely. I agree and with that's you. One of, that's one of the great things about a pool route, especially a service uh, route, is they are very saleable. There are brokers that handle only those transactions. There's guys that rather than get big, uh, they'll accumulate pools up to a point, package them up and sell them. And that, that's a part of their revenue stream. Um, and, and that re- works very well for some guys. So I saw, I saw people do that in the alarm business. They mm, would just go yeah. out, get a route, and then, you know, oh, here's 100 clients. They'd sell them and then go. They were great at selling, but they weren't good at maintaining. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good business model. It right. is a good business model. Right, you take over the pool, you do all the repairs on it, you you uh, keep the customer happy for it. Usually, usually you have to have had them for a couple of years before you can even think about selling them. But um, it, it uh, yeah, it works for some guys. Yeah. Yes. And I think people are I assume that an accountant costs you know five hundred bucks a month or something. Um, Joe and I think you know we're not we're not just talking about prices today because we're gonna use that in the promotional. Um, videos and maybe do a special deal for folks so look for that but explain that it's not as you know it's not as expensive as people think it is so what i've been striving to do ever since i figured out that i could do bookkeeping remotely michelle was to use the technology to drive down the cost of doing the bookkeeping and accounting and i did it i was able to take my Believe it or not, my fees were cut in half. Yeah. Because I could handle five times as many clients doing my with my system. And and that and but I hit a wall because there was only so far I can go with QuickBooks and with that market. With Wave, I can't like the the prices that I'm putting out, I'm like, am I crazy? How but it's it's so systematized and organized yeah. that my I hope that CPAs out there don't start getting mad at me. But what, <laughs> what I'm willing to do, if you're an accountant, I'd be more than happy to share with you how I'm doing this. There's there's probably 25 million businesses out there that need this kind of service, literally. Yeah. And you know, so it's it's fast, it's efficient, and it's very, very affordable 
for people that are just starting a business or just trying to run a business and just get organized and can't afford, you know, a $300 a month account. Yeah. So I'll just leave and it at that. What other services do you provide, Joe? I know that if, if somebody really needed to get their taxes done, you would quote them out separately for to do their taxes if need be. What other services do you provide? Yeah, well, I've been doing, the, believe it or not, since I started doing this, uh, it turns out there's a, there's a lot of people who got their returns messed up because they went to a tax preparer. And now I'm look, and I'm actually doing a lot of uh, prior period returns. So, you know, it's like uh, you could call it tax problems resolutions or, yeah. you know, and I handle th those kinds of things. What's the number one mistake do you think, Joe, besides the organization? I guess organization is really the number one mistake. But is there one thing that people do with their bookkeeping or their accounting that is like the big the big red flag for you? This is everybody does this and they do it wrong? Nothing? Uh, it, 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 just the fact that they procrastinate. They don't really do it. They don't have yeah. a system. They're like, okay, I'll do it. You know, and then I see the people that have a system that's like, what, what are you doing? You, you're doing 15 different, you know, <laughs> things when you only have to do one. Right. And it comes down to, and it's because I've been doing it thousands of times over 35 years. It's simple for me. It's simple to say, oh, you're doing it in the wrong sequence. Mm. How does it? Dave, I wouldn't even know where to start with the poll. I might mm -hmm. stick my, my foot in there to see if it's cold. <laughs> but it's like, where do people start? Yeah. But you have to. So if I, if I was going to say the biggest mistake people make is they don't educate themselves yeah. on the basic financial reports. Well, I think there's a correlation there that you brought out. The, I'll tell you where to start with a pool. You start with a test kit. You want to know your numbers. You want to know what your pH, your chlorine level, your alkalinity, your, your calcium hardness, you, you mix that all together and you come up with the Langler saturation index. And that tells you, is the water going to promote scale? Is it going to be corrosive? Um, is it properly sanitized? And you've got the big picture of what's going on in your pool water. And I, I don't understand a word you just said, which is why <laughs> I, I would just hire you if I had a poll yes, and just say, right. Dave, that, I love that stuff. Go do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly how we are about numbers in books. Most yes. of us. Now, your, yeah. your average pool person does did not get to where they are by means of an MBA. They, they, <laughs> chances are a friend of they were out of work and a friend of them, friend showed them out of, <laughs> what to buy yeah, and right. how to use it and they just kind of took off from there and so. i and you gotta love that kind of bravery too dave because to be at to go out on your own to venture out on your own and do that even though there's not a lot of you know you can easily get into the swimming pool service side but i think it takes a lot of guts it's brave to do that and i think you know now that you've done it you've taken that jump off the cliff Let's make sure that you know, you're handling the organizational side of your finances that you're successful. Because isn't that the key? Isn't that what we all want is to be successful? And, and you, like you said, Dave, be able to spend time with our family and and to to, to live our lives. And, and really what's important is not the job. It's your family and friends and those kinds of things. So that's the goal. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I have a question for you, Joe. And if, if you don't want to touch on it. I understand you're a bookkeeper, not an economist, but we're watching things right now. The pool industry is one industry that's doing quite well right now. People are home, they're spending money. Um, they're, they're looking at their pool as a way to, to have fun or they're even building pools right and left too. Yep. There's even shortages of concrete and cement in some places, wow. but um, the business is booming right now. But, Looking at the horizon, the government is printing money and giving it away. There, um, people are lo gradually losing their jobs the more that we stay shut down. So what kind of advice would you give us uh, for ways we could prepare ourselves for next year and years beyond? 
<clears throat> you know, Dave, thanks for asking. Because all you got to do is look back at history. I mean, this isn't the first time we've had some kind of like major, major uh, issue hit us and hit us economically. And, you know, you just look at wars and, you know, 9 11 and, and all of these things. And it comes down to just simple fundamentals. If you stay in the basics, everything works out. You know, it's like, and I'm not an economist, but I do know something about the stock market. I know that since the beginning, all it's done over time is go up. It doesn't just go straight up, it goes like this. Yeah. And then what I learned is the people that make money are the people that buy when it's down here. And, and then up here, they, they keep it. I don't even know what I'm saying here, but basically. No, I get it. it it's a straight line. And if, so it's something like bookkeeping. And, you know, the people that had cash reserves, the, the clients that listened to me that actually had lines of credit before this happened, <laughs> you know, these are the fundamental things that business owners do. You have to plan. It's not when the economy is going to go. It's not if the economy is going to go south. It's when. Right. It's when. So you just stay in the basics. And the, the most basic thing anybody could do, Dave, especially in the pool business, is stay connected with your client. Because in the end, that, that's all that matters. Your, your relationships with your clients, your vendors. And, and that's my story. I'm sitting with them. <laughs> Did you have another question? Dave looked like you were going to say something. No, that, that's actually oh. a really good point. There's a really funny thing that I've kind of seen with, with some of the pool guys I work with right now is that people are, are kind of using this to – to switch around, we've, we've seen a lot of people, uh, clients um, switching services. We, we've, I've seen guys lo lose customers and they go to another pool guy because they think they're, they can find it a little cheaper or the, the and, but other, other clients are doing it and you pick up almost everything you've, you've lost. It's a really strange time. I think it's just, kind of indicative that people are just a little freaked out right now and they're just yeah there there's there's a, not a lot of stability in the, in the world right now it, there's uncertainty and fear and yeah you know that's why like you know and that's why when people have faith they get through things like this and thank god you know i i've had faith and i, I know whatever trials and tribulations are going on now it's uh it'll work out one yeah. way or another it might not work out the way i want it to <laughs> but it'll work out yes and i think if you organize if you have your financials organized and i think that these are times of stress whenever these things go down you know as you mentioned dave it's just the uncertainty and all that is stressful and you don't want the added stress if your book's not being organized Let's take that stress out of the picture. So at least you can, you know, focus on the other stressors that are really going on that you're worried about. And if you have a plan, like Joe was saying, then it's gonna it's gonna be a huge because money's a big deal, you guys. Just like you said, the emotion around money, it's huge. It could make or break your your day. It could make or break your month. It could make or break your week. It's just your mood is tied to it. It's it's a lot. That's you don't need that stress. So if in the basics that that you're talking about if i'm understanding it right correct me if i'm wrong the, the most some of the most basic things would be managing your debt and protecting your credit absolutely you know and one of the good things that's going to come out of this is people are, are more aware of what they're spending money on how they're spending it you know it, it's because we had to go, we had to start calling our credit card companies and saying, listen, <clears throat> can you give me a better deal? Uh, but, you know, people were forced to 
to look at those finances, people that were comfortable because every month, you know, the bills somehow got paid. Now it was like, oh my God. And I, I think people are gonna, they're getting a forced education. Mm -hmm. and, and you gotta look at this stuff. You can't, you can't run a business with your head in the sand. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for coming on today. We appreciate it. Um, stay, look out for potential, um, or, or I shouldn't say potential, look out for discounts or for a special plan we're going to put in place for Joe's services. Like I said before, I have personal experience with Joe. Dave has personal experience with Joe. And that's why we wanted to have him on because we believe in what he's doing. And we want to see if we can help you organize your business if you're struggling and, and hopefully make your life a little less, life a little less stressful. That's the goal here for sure. Thank you so much, Joe. We appreciate you. Stay safe Thanks, out there in New York. Yeah. All right. Be good. Take care. A new voice in the industry. A resource for all. Education for you. This is Pool Pro Podcast. Build relationships and share important news as we get ready for our next backyard adventure. Pool Pro Podcast. Backyard adventures are better together. Please take a moment to share, like, and review our content with all of those that would be interested.